let's look at another master game <clears throat> where the feature is absolute central control. So in this case, it's uh, the Hungarian uh, Grandmaster Andras uh, Osvaf against Jan Schmeichel uh, playing uh, black. And this is another feature of what you should try to do in your games, which is a total dominance of the center. So when the opponent make, makes mistakes and doesn't contest the center properly, we should get into the center and think about all our developing moves being um, entirely focused on, on the center. So let's see how Ozvath uh, proceeds. So he opens with e4, and uh, Black responds with, with e5, so that's for Michael. So then, then we get uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now the bishop to, uh, to b5. So Roy Lopez is on the board. A6 is A6 is played by Black, and in this case, uh, there's uh, different variations in the theory. And you can, of course, capture the bishop. Uh, the sorry, the knight on C6. We should talk about this. So the reason you might be tempted to do that is if there's a capture on C6, this knight is critical to controlling the center squares on E5 and D4. But uh, Oswald decides to retreat the bishop to a4. And now black plays uh, quite a slow move here. So this, um, this move e6, or sorry, excuse me, d6, the key feature of this is it, it's slow with regards to, to, con to uh, controlling the center. The other thing is, the other feature of this is that it, opens, it now opens the pin onto the black king. And the third feature to note about this is that the bishop that's uh, still at home on, on f8 is now not able to, to uh, get out because of the blockage of the pawn. So this, is, this will look like a strange decision by white here. But what happens is after retreating to a4, white then captures. And of course leaves the only possibility of, of uh, the, the b pawn taking it. So this looks a little... A little ominous for white in the sense that these four black pawns are seem to be able to control the center if this were to push for example to d5 this if we were to recapture this could pass the double pawn situation would be would be sorted out for black so white has to be very careful here and make sure that uh make sure that we don't lose control of the center so the key feature, though, the reason White made this decision is the fact that the knight is now gone on, on c6. And because it's gone, it can't control these dark squares in the center. So White immediately seizes the center with d4. And so Black decides to capture this pawn. And this is another key decision where I think a lot of developing players would go wrong. So you could, of course, recapture with the knight. But one of the key themes when we talk about center, center control is the idea that if your knight is in what I called yesterday the ideal position, so that's its natural developing squares. So c3, c6, f6, and f3, you need to have a very good reason why you would move a knight away from that location. And, and if we were to uh, go into the center, it's... It, it can have uh, valid points too in some cases because, of course, the closer the knight is to the center, the more control it has over the squares around it. But in this case, the other key feature in the opening is we really want to develop. So white in this case plays queen takes d4. And it seems a little bit strange and, and it seems counterintuitive to, to peace development because normally... Normally, the idea is you would keep the queen at home. You focus on development of the minor pieces. But the reason that Oswald decides to do this is, again, for the reason that the, the knight on c6 is gone, so the queen can't really be harassed. It also threatens, it has excellent control over these central squares. And particularly on the dark squares, there is an immediate threat to, to g7. So black will have difficulty developing this bishop on uh, f8 because the b7 pawn will, will always be hit. So black recognizes this, and 
and actually plays f6, <clears throat> which again is, I think, a bit of a howler because this knight would be far better placed on on f6 and in only moving the pawn one square um the knight is going to have difficulty developing because now this this black bishop is still got an issue of where it's going to go and the knight really is forced to go to e7 and facing off against this pawn here the knight being three scores away is is uh, a bad location for it because it can't it this pawn controls the squares on f5 and d5 so it's going to be very difficult for that knight to develop so we want to control the center so white plays white plays knight to c3 and i should note too that another possibility that that white could think about is it's always good if you can on the on the on the c and f files if you could push c4 safely right you'd have control over control over d5 and then be able to get the knight developing behind it which is a possibility too but in this case white decides to white decides to go with knight to c3 again controlling the white scores in the center so perfect positioning for his knights and black has already has a bit of a development issue so g6 so this is already starting to look very very shaky for black so these are very slow pawn moves they're not challenging the center they're it's not very clear how the black pieces are going to develop so this is definitely a bit of an issue for for black so far so then uh white just says okay if you're going to play these slow moves to your your third rank uh, in in the opening then i'm going to continue dominating the squares in the center how do we do that bishop to f4 so now this has uh, perfect control over e5 and is threatening d6 as well. This pawn could potentially become weak. It's, it's going to make it difficult for this to move. This pawn is weak at uh, c6. And so white's development is absolutely perfect and has much better control over the center. So black's trying to figure out how to solve his development problems and plays bishop to g7. And so now um is is threatening uh tempo on the queen so that was the downside of that was the downside of uh using the queen to recapture on d4 is that now there's this potential that it's going to be hit but note that it can't do it right away because of course this bishop is not protected so if black were to push f5 we could simply just recapture on uh, on g7 so this is a this is a move that that Andres uh, sorry Andres Toth who is is teaching the center control course that this uh, video series is an inspiration uh, been an inspiration for. One of the points he makes is that long side castling is something that's underutilized by club players, and the and the reason it can be so good. And again, it's subject to the specific situation it's not just a hard and fast rule you have to look at the specifics of of the game state but if you want castle look where the rook winds up right on d1 right so look at this we're aiming for central control we ideally want to bring our rooks into the center to control these the d and e files and with long castle you're already there as opposed to kingside castling where your rook would be on f1 and you'd have to spend an extra move bringing it to e1 and as you'll see in the theme of center control and, and development earlier in the game, one move can make all the difference. And you certainly don't want to have inefficiencies around that move. So Black's uh, still thinking about how to develop his pieces and does play a decent move in uh, uh, Bishop to, to G4. So the idea of, of and this and with our rook arriving on D1, uh, the knight is is now temporarily pinned. And so and so the reason that's that's smart for black to do is that this knight of course is controlling the dark squares in the middle so if you can fix it there then you'll have the ability to to uh, hinder white's ability to to control the center a little bit more so this is an example of uh, this goes back to what i was saying yesterday about marie sashley's course on on it's called what grandmasters don't see so it's very difficult to have the creativity to see that e5 is a possibility here and a lot of club players would look at this and say well there's a pawn on there's a pawn on d6 there's a pawn on f6 
there's no way that this e5 can can possibly be right but what white's noticing is that if this bishop were to somehow take the the problem with this bishop on on g4 is that it's hanging right if if we could if we push this pawn and somehow get this bishop out of the way we can of course capture here the computer's noting the queen is c4 probably was better in this in this specific situation and i think the reason we should should note that is the fact that c6 is really weak so if you go queen to c4 you're of course the, the king being vulnerable in the center and this is another problem with black's development because it's been too slow the king is still vulnerable on this open file so queen to to c4 would immediately threaten uh, the capture on c6 hitting the rook and the king with check of course but white's saying let's just continue absolute momentum continue center domination and, and play z5 so now uh, Black makes a decision to double the pawns on the f file. So he's saying, uh, let's capture this, this knight, which of course is controlling these dark squares. And so that's, that's smart in the sense that it gets rid of the knight that controls these central squares, but we still have our queen and soon to be the rook on the open file that will be, that weight is calculating will be more important than, uh, than losing the knight. So Black does capture on f3 and white uh, decides to take out on d6 so the idea is white immediately wants to open this this e, this e file so white is recognizing that black has has left the king in the center has not developed quickly enough does not have king safety and of course if we capture on f6 we get hit with uh, bishop takes f6 which of course hits the queen so black is immediately looking to to open the e file and then give the black king all kinds of problems so e takes d6 is played and now of course we have a check available on on um, the king on on e8 and so the interesting thing about this move too is that black has left open the possibility of this recapture so he's willing to uh, so white has left the possibility of this recapture so white is willing to go down in exchange in exchange for this high velocity attack on on the black king so so black wants to take the material and decides to play bishop takes d1 and that of course allows allows white to get in with the check right away so this this was the whole design of this play get the pawn off the e-file don't worry about the material for now and get the tempo with uh rook to e1 so in this case black of course with the king not being safe has to just sidestep it and decides to go to f8 so now wait having lost the exchange on d1 now has to think about how he continues the the attack so this knight needs to to come into play the he's he's worried with the king now on f8 the bishop is now protected so this pawn push with tempo comes into play so white wants to make sure he retains control of the center and that's that's the key move if if your queen is going to become vulnerable like in this case you want to think of a square where you can continue to control the center right so so white quite wisely i think goes to to c5 so again threatening threatening this pawn which is weak um and and that comes into play so so black recognizes this and plays uh, queen to to d7 so wanting to to obviously protect this this pawn on uh, c6 but white again with these three pieces has excellent control over the center and of course the rook as well on the open e file so now white decides to clear both the d and e files and this is this is interesting too because this of course the thing with the queen going to c5 is that there's a pin here now so so white can capture this this pawn on c7 with check and that does allow black to develop his last piece and so it's uh it's knight to it's knight to e e7 and this of course allows allows the capture and um this becomes a target on e7 and now we see the power of the open file and the exposed king because this with with this bishop on f4 
<clears throat> it's now going to become very easy for it to get to to d6. So there's the possibility that um, so if we take with a rook um, again going down a further exchange. So that would mean white's now down two exchanges. The problem is that if the queen recaptures, we will play bishop to to d6, pinning pinning the queen. So we take on on e7. And black does decide to take. And that gives white the opportunity to get in bishop to to d6. So in this case, uh, so black now has uh, significant problems. So these rooks, despite being up two exchanges, look at the position of these rooks. They're still stuck at home. So they're um, they have no ability to get into the game. They have no ability to develop and there's really there's really nothing for them to to do at this point and it's the the lack of development by black is what's really telling in this position so computers recommending here um and 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 actually if you if you look at the engine evaluation it's already over six pawns so 6.62 so it's coming up with something for black as it's going to do uh, bishop to to g4 but really that move is is utterly irrelevant because control of these light squares here is not a feature of the position. So that just won't, that won't have any relevance to what's going on in the game. So um, at this point, uh, Black actually resigned because Black's recognizing that, and we can see the evaluation here, that there just isn't, there isn't anything to do. So if Bishop to G4, we're just simply going to capture the queen and, and there can't even be a recapture and this pawn is threatening a queen the other problem is the other uh problem too is that the 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 rooks are not connected so we have the the possibility of potentially we could eventually take on c6 capture on a8 the the the, the there, there are checkmate possibilities of this coming in so we would obviously take <clears throat> and then if we if we look at this um, the, the white's rapidly running out of, uh, or black is rapidly running out of options as to where to put the king for safety, uh, because this is a possibility with the bishop coming back. But then we have things like capture here. This could potentially promote this bishop. <clears throat> could could um, so if let's say it's it's king to let's say it's king to to f seven. Uh, we this if if this bishop goes to the the end um, the last rank we cut off communication of the rooks capture would would win back an exchange but uh, there's also the possibility of um, is of of taking on of taking on c6 and checking here getting the knight into the game to threaten things like if knight comes to e4 we get it into to d d6 and, and really challenge the black king again so an amazing demonstration uh by the white side here of how speed and central control is more important than material white was down two exchanges and still had such a rapid attack on the black king that was exposed in the center uh, that uh, black resigned after 17 minutes so another masterful demonstration